And just like that, guys, we are now enjoying these 4K Apple TV screensavers on our new Chromecast with Google TV, guys. So, okay, so first up, can I use my Amazon 4K Fire Stick remote control on my new Chromecast with Google TV? Or really, I guess you're trying to say, can you use any other remote control other than the stock one? Because unfortunately, the stock one is very slippery. It doesn't have a dedicated play button or forward and rewind button, so it, it is pretty basic. And I would just say that of all of the devices I've ever tested, the 4K Fire Stick, especially with the new IR controls, is one of the best, if not the best remote control for these streaming devices. Okay, so how can we now use that on our Chromecast? Well, if you go to your settings on the top right, let's click there, scroll down, where it says remotes and accessories, let's click on that. Let's now click on pair remote or accessory. Click on that. Now on this device, I'm gonna press and hold the play button. Give that a second. We can see that's now come up. I can now go over to that, click on that, give that another second. That says it's now connecting and that's now paired. So if I now press home on this one, we are now using our Fire Street remote control on our Chromecast. So navigating around works fine. I mean, honestly, this just feels infinitely better in my hand versus this slippery um, bar of soap. So I can click on things. Now, for example, if I actually play something, and let's just do YouTube to be safe. If I just click on play. Now the great thing is I can actually now press pause. I can now use the rewind button and all that stuff. So we now have the full functionality of those buttons on the Chromecast. Now, unfortunately the voice control does not work on this. So if I now press the home key, and let's say for example, I want to talk to the voice assistant. If I press this, what's the weather in London? So all they can detect that this button has been pressed. Unfortunately, that microphone input cannot be sent from this Fire Stick remote control over to the Chromecast. So that is one thing to bear in mind that if you do want to use this remote control, although you can use all of the functions, you cannot use the voice assistant using the Alexa button. Next up we have, how easy is it to expand the storage of the new Chromecast? As we can see out of the box, my device has just over four gigs of free space. And as we know guys, once you do install a couple of applications, a couple of things, that really does get filled up very quickly. So let me firstly show you how you can actually add a USB drive to your Chromecast. So here is the all new Chromecast with Google TV. We know it only has a single Type-C USB port, but what I've done here is in that port, I've plugged in this small USB uh, 3 hub. We can see this has three USB 3 ports and it also has a gigabit ethernet port that we can just see there. Now for this to work, we do have to supply extra power to this hub. So I've actually bought a 45 watt power adapter, which is a type C power adapter, which I'm using to power this. So that power input goes into the hub, then the hub itself powers the Chromecast. So let's say for example, you want to expand the internal storage of the Chromecast by using a simple USB drive. Now, alternatively, you could use a USB hard disk or even an SSD drive. But for this demonstration, let's see how easy it is to configure a USB drive and then migrate applications from the internal storage over to the USB drive. So let me now plug that in. Okay, that's now all plugged in. So let's now jump over to the Chromecast. So now that we've plugged that in, we can see it appears as removable storage. Now what removable storage means is any content on here, I can access it. Let's say for example, there were some photos on here or some movies, I could actually play that content from this USB drive. I can also take this USB drive out and plug it into my PC or into another device and access that content. But as soon as I make this drive as adoptable storage or internal storage, then the only place where I can use this drive will only be on the Chromecast. So let's now click on that. And we can see we get the option here, set this up as device storage. And device storage basically means you can install applications to it. You can also move applications that were previously on the internal storage over to this USB drive. So that's the option I'm gonna go for. Let's click on that. And then we can just see it guys, because it's a secure format, because the drive will be encrypted, once again, the only place where you can use this drive will be the place where you formatted it. Okay, let's now click on format. And then you'll see this message asking you whether you want to move your current files and some of your app data over to the USB drive. Now, you can do that if you want to, but in my example, I'm gonna click on move later. But once that process is completed, this drive is now configured as internal storage. So in fact, I have 30 plus four, so about 34 gigs of storage I can use for 
my applications. Let's just test that now. So if I now open up another application, and if you go to my website, go to tutorials, you'll see there is a dedicated tutorial for Nvidia Shield and Android TV hidden features. And in fact, all of these will actually work on the brand new Chromecast with Google TV. Let's scroll down. And just while we're doing that, guys, if you are enjoying these kind of videos, if you want to see more tutorials for the new Chromecast or the NVIDIA Shield or all of the Amazon devices, then please do take a moment to hit that like button and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way you can help support my channel. Thank you. And let's see what happens when we install the mouse toggle for Android TV. Let's click on that. Scroll down and click on the green download button. And it's actually going to be the next question because lots of you are asking, how do we get a virtual cursor or a virtual mouse working on our Chromecast? Let's click on install. Let's click on done. So that's one application we've installed so far. Let's now press the home key. And let's also install this application called TV Mate. Let's click on that. Click on install. I just want to demonstrate if you do install applications from either downloader or from the official Play Store, where do those applications actually get installed to? And the way we confirm that, if I press the home key, go over to settings, let's go to applications, see all apps. So the first thing I installed was the, the virtual mouse, which is this one here. Now if I click on that, there we can just see it guys, it's telling us that the application is using three megabytes on the USB drive. So the application installed from Downloader has gone directly to the USB drive. So that's not going to take up any space from my internal storage. Let's back out of that. And the other application we just installed was TV Mate. Let's click on that. And we can see for this application, this actually installed directly to internal storage. So even though we've got the USB drive configured, this application, because of the way it's written or the way it's coded, will always install to internal storage. But there is actually a workaround for that, which I'm just going to show you. If I back out of this, now for applications that can actually be moved over to the USB drive, if you click on them, here we can see the Explorer app. If I go to storage, we can see it's using 21 megs of internal storage. But if I click on that, I now get the option to move that over to the USB drive. So if I click on that again, this will now move all of the contents for the application of the internal storage over to the USB drive. But we can see guys, that particular option is only for certain applications. So I back out of this. Let's try this one over here. If I go into that, go to storage, we can see there's no option for me to actually move that. And this is where the workaround actually comes into effect. So if I back out of this, back again, and inside system, we want to open up the developer options. Now, if you don't see this menu, the way you activate that is if you go over to about, go down, and where it says build number, you want to keep pressing the select button here seven times, and eventually it will say you are a developer. And when you see that option, you can now press backup one, scroll down, and let's now open up the developer options. And the thing that we're looking for in here you keep scrolling down is this option here. So this says force applications to go onto external storage. So even if the application has been coded where it only understands internal storage, you can actually click on this and this should then allow you to move that over to your USB drive. So now that we've enabled that, let's press the back button. Let's go back to applications. Let's see if we can now move those two applications. So the first one was uh, TV mate. Let's go down to that, go to storage. And I now get the option to move that over to the USB drive. So I can click on that, give that a second. And the application has now been fully migrated over to that USB drive. Uh, let's press the back again. And the last one was uh, the Wolf Launcher. As we saw before, when I clicked here, nothing would happen. But if I click on it now, we now have the option to move that guy. So that's basically how you can move applications that were only designed to go into the internal storage over to your USB drive. Okay, let's back out of that. Next up, can we use a virtual mouse on the new Chromecast? And the answer to that is yes. As we just saw from our website, we installed mouse toggle. Let's click on that. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually give this application the correct permissions that we need. And we can see it's given us that red warning over there. Now, the way we do that, if you press the back button again, let's go over to settings. Let's go down into system. Let's go to accessibility. And here I'm hoping there should be a service. There it is. So mouse toggle is currently off. Let's now turn that on. Click on enable. Click on OK. Let's open the application again. We can see that red warning is now gone. Now because I want to activate the mouse, I can double press the play button. 
And just like that, guys, we now have a fully working virtual mouse that we can use on our Chromecast. And this is particularly useful for certain applications that were designed for cell phones and tablets, although you can install them on your Android TV device. Unless you have a virtual mouse, they just don't work properly. But with this process, we can use our five stick remote control with the play button and use a virtual mouse. If I press the home button, that deactivates the mouse. If I press the home button again, let's say I'm using the Explorer application and I now want to bring up a virtual mouse. Once again, double press the play button. There's my virtual mouse. And I can now move around and get full access by using a virtual mouse. So let's back out of that. Next up, you're not happy with the Wi-Fi speed on your device, or more to the point, you want a more stable, consistent, reliable connection that you can only really get with Ethernet. How do we do that? Okay, so you're not happy with the wireless on the Chromecast and you'd rather use Ethernet. And typically you get a more consistent, reliable connection when using a wire versus wireless. Now with this particular hub, as we can see, there's actually an Ethernet port built in. So what I need to do now is take the Ethernet cable that's now gone in. So that is a gigabit port and that's now plugged into a gigabit switch. And back on the device, we can see that my Chromecast has detected that Ethernet cable and it will now use Ethernet over wireless. Now just for a quick speed test. Okay, so we can see with Ethernet, I'm getting around about 300 meg. Now, coincidentally, I think I actually got a faster speed using 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but, but as we know with Ethernet, you're not impacted by how far your device is from the router or you know, how many walls or obstructions are in the way. You have that consistent, reliable connection versus Wi-Fi. Next up, I really don't like the standard Chromecast uh, Daydream screensaver. How can I change that to something a bit more fancy? Well, on the same tutorial page, as I mentioned before, we can see we have a direct link for Aerial Dream. Let's click on that. Let's scroll down and click on the green download button. Let's click on install. Let's now click on open. Here we can customize some of the settings. So do you want the screen service from the 2015 Apple TV or the 2017? Uh, let's just do this one in 4K. Let's just do all in 4K. Let's click on test. And just like that, guys, we are now enjoying these 4K Apple TV screen savers on our new Chromecast with Google TV, guys. So do give a thumbs up for that. Now, if I press the back button again, I can now go to my settings and here I can actually choose the screensaver. So I can now click on Aerial Dream and that will basically set that as a default screensaver. So the next time your device is idle and you'll see some amazing screensavers like that. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. So many of you are asking so many questions about the new Chromecast since my last video. So I do hope I answered at least some of them. And if you guys have other questions on the Chromecast, then do leave me a comment below. Do let me know what you think about this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.